Shine.fm presents Stronger Together, a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Here's Seth Tower Heard. This is Stronger Together. It's a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationship, and community. My name is Seth Tower Heard. Jason Davis joins me for a pretty fascinating conversation about where actual fulfillment in life does and doesn't come from. So we're going to get into your later life a bit later here, uh, you know, Jay-Z, Boys to Men, massive, massive artists that you want to come into contact and working with. Uh, but really your story of how you got to Jesus starts out when you were like 12, you said you were a kid that, you know, maybe just people didn't really notice a lot and you go to a concert and for the first time you kind of felt like you belonged in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I, watching uh, artists, music artists um, on television, uh, the first concert or two, I, to me, I, I saw just 20,000, 15,000 people worshiping and adoring um, the people on stage. And, uh, you know, I felt, I felt um, very isolated as a kid and, and uh, definitely um, at times was hurting as a kid. Uh, quietly hurting and uh, I saw that you know I had a deep desire to be loved and um, I saw that music was a way that um, people could actually pay attention to you and maybe even love you if you were good enough okay and you uh, were raised in a fairly secular kind of setting did, um, very yeah. Yeah. My mom and dad were Jewish. Um, the only real religious thing growing up was there was a lot of Jewish pride um, because my mom's parents, my grandparents were in the concentration camps in Germany. So it kind of raised my mom to just be like, you know, be proud that you're Jewish, you know, never back down from being Jewish. So there was a lot of Jewish pride, but, but there was no, uh, no connection with God. I think, the most we ever went to temple as a kid was once a year. Um, and God was never talked about in my household. So would you, when you said you're like the, this isolated kid, who has kind of a, a discovery. Would you say that uh, you had some kind of belief at that time or was it, it you know, it's not that, cause I think about like, you know, parents listening to this, by the time you're 12 years old, you, you've got a way that you see the world, right? So did, yeah. did you think there was a God or something out there? Or are you just like, yeah, it doesn't matter. You live, you die, that's it. I didn't believe that there was a God at that time in my life. Um, I was always deep as a kid, a deep thinker. Um, so I do remember this one moment as a young boy sitting on these rocks overlooking a lake. And I was probably six or seven, eight years old. And I remember asking some deep life questions, even at that age, you know, why am I here? What, what is it all this about? What's the meaning of this? Um, but never really asked the question of, is there a God? And I never really thought of God. Um, so at that point in my life, no. Okay. And what happens next is pretty much if you've ever watched the old VH1 series behind the music, it's sort of like that, except it winds up at Jesus. By the way, this is Stronger Together. It's a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationship, and community. Jason Davis joins me, who has a, a pretty incredible story to tell uh, about a dramatic rise to fame and then not really a fall, but just a really terrible feeling that... I'm here. Now what? <laughs> so let's get to that. I'm, I'm here. Now what? How did you wind up working with such massive artists uh, and, uh, you know, getting to a place where I think a lot of people, at least from a worldly standpoint, would say, that's about as good as you get. You get money, you get famous friends, people know who you are, you know, life is easy. It, uh, it all happened. And, uh, you know, I'm guessing that there wasn't a lot of, um, you know, it doesn't sound like there was a lot of terrible setbacks or tragedy along the way. You just kind of had this rocket towards things people want. Yeah, I I realized at 23 years old, I had I lived on my own since I was 18. Um, my parents were divorced when I was 17 and uh, had it real rough from 18 to 23. You know, often didn't have enough money 
to buy a meal. Uh, we'd go hungry. We'd go without the lights on. We'd get. I got evicted from many apartments when I was younger, and really rough. And so I were you re- chasing I, the dream of being in music at that time? Or no, no. I, I was you know, eighteen to twenty-three. I was writing songs all the time, but I, I was working regular jobs. I was really trying to become my dad. I was trying to please my dad, and I didn't know any other path in life. And I finally realized at 23 that it was music. And once that switch went off, that that's my passion and that's what I have to do with my life. That's really where the beginnings of me becoming a man came in. Uh, This Terminator switch went off, I like to call it. And I started waking up every day at uh, 5.30 in the morning and I would go into New York City with a backpack and bless you. Uh, put on a pound on record label, you know, doors basically, um, cold call people at record labels. And I, I just worked very intensely, um, for several years networking, trying to get in rooms, trying to get in doors, meeting VPs of labels. And, um, it was just through networking and meeting producers. And I eventually in Los Angeles, I met my first really big producer that was super hot. Um, I had been grinding it out for the first four years and had had some successes. I landed people some record deals and I landed a bunch of songs I wrote on records, but I was still trying to figure out the business and still trying to hang on. And it was, was not easy. Um, and I met this huge producer and, um, the producer, uh, by the grace of God, uh, got to know me and said he wanted me to manage him. And this is, you know, at a time where, I mean, he, this producer was getting $40,000 a song up front from record labels. And he was, he was in the middle of song deals from labels where they would, you know, cut a deal for him to produce 10 songs for $400,000 and get 200,000 of it up front. And, you know, it, it, he was doing big business. Um, regularly. So it's safe to say you could go to McDonald's and order something at that point. Yeah. Well, that, that was the beginning of really the beginning of an explosion. And so he basically um, knew that I was a great net networker and I knew a lot of people at labels and he basically found an artist that he liked and developed this artist, signed the artist, gave the artist to me um, to manage and, was like, Hey, go try to get this a deal. And, uh, it was four years in and this artist ended up getting, um, a little over a million dollar record deal. And, uh, there was $800,000 to make the record, which the producer got. Um, the artist got close to $200,000 in their pocket. And that was the beginning of all the presidents of labels, not just vice presidents or directors of A&R, or, you know, the scout in a small office in a label. This was the beginning of like presidents and CEOs and their assistants at labels actually knowing who I was and knowing my name. And um, once that ha- once that deal happened, I had kind of like, I wasn't meaning to, but I kind of had everybody's attention. And everybody was like, okay, what is he going to bring in next? And I actually started having... A&Rs at labels that had found artists that they liked and couldn't get a deal with their label, they would bring me the artist and say, hey, this is your new manager. And hey, Jason, go work your magic and try to get this a deal outside of my label. And I just started, a lot of record deals started happening um, very often. And they were all very big deals. And all of a sudden, other producers started coming to me saying, could you do the same thing for me that you're doing with this producer that you manage and I would start managing a new producer or a producer duo or whatever. And they would then give me their artists. And so I was getting, you know, a handful or more of major, major financial deals a year. And uh, some of those artists ended up hitting some of those artists ended up failing. I learned a lot from all of it, but that's kind of what got me in the room with like bigger name writers, bigger name producers, eventually, started getting to know some, like, you know, people at labels would see what I was doing and say, Hey, you need to meet these guys from Sugar Ray, you know, like, and meet Snoop Dogg. And, and all of a sudden I found myself in some pretty crazy 
houses or, you know, studios with people that I never dreamed I would be with. Um, and I just realized like, this is, you know, when doors were opening, I realized I have to walk in these doors and make the most of every single microscopic detail of this opportunity. Like if I have to hold on to somebody's leg, you know, um, whatever I have to do to build these relationships and become friends with people. And, and I would literally like, um, I'd buy people dinners. I would, um, if I'm just being super transparent, I mean, at that time, if, if there was an A&R at a record label that I knew and they told me on the side, like, you know, there's the, like, you know, cause I got to know people personally and uh, I find out that this A&R needed, you know, wanted a new apartment and they were trying to like up their life. And, and I would be like, well, if you need help with that, let me know. And, you know, I mean, I, I literally helped certain a rs get into like better cars or apartments. And I mean, I was just, like I will there's do- a Proverbs thing there, right? Like yeah. about how basically money will, will get you friends. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and I, so I was making a lot, but I was investing a lot of passion and energy and fight and a lot of my own money into building relationships. And I was literally back then, I didn't know the Lord. Uh, I was very lost. All I wanted was success which isn't a great thing to only want, um, but that's what that's what I wanted. And I was literally willing to do anything to grow a relationship with somebody. You know, if I met somebody and I knew that there was a gap in their life or they needed something in their life, I would literally like just go buy it for them. Or um, and it just and then people would start bringing stuff to me, which is was never my intention. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So before we hit the spiritual stuff, I actually want to go backwards here yeah. to parenting, believe it or not, uh, because we're in an era where every eight year old will say, what, what do you want to do when you grow up? They're going to, every kid at some point is going to say, I want to be on YouTube. I want to make a living off of YouTube. Right. And the thing is, is like, they might. I mean, not everybody listening is going to have a kid that makes a living on YouTube, but uh, I think one of the highest paid uh, YouTubers in the world who's making tens of millions of dollars, uh, you know, he's under the shine guy. If I'm listening to that, that gamer guy named Ninja, uh, I think he's making, uh, you know, in, in excess of $20 million a year, just being on YouTube. And so, you know, when these questions used to come up of like, Oh, well, I want to do, uh, you know, I want to be in a band or something like that. It used to be, uh, well, you know, this is the nineties and that's not possible. There's only a few bands. They're on the radio. It's like winning the lottery. Now, if your kid says this, you know, how you handle that as a parent is complicated, but you can't just say, well, that's not possible because now it is. Sure. Before we move on to the spiritual stuff, if somebody has got a kid that's highly creative or kids that are highly creative and they're young, uh, you know, I mean, as a person who is both a Christian and who has done this, what would you say to a situation like that? I, there's spirit because there's talent and there's spiritual danger of ego and being, you know, trapped in, in lies and this whole thing. So how do you want yeah, to and, and also very important and ending up meeting the wrong people that don't care about them or their kid. Um, and there's not a lot, I mean, thanks to God, there's, there's some people with some real heart in this business and some beautiful people, but there's many more that are very self-serving and, yeah. uh, are not, are not good. But I would say if, if I had a child as a businessman, I've, I've been a businessman for the last 21 years of my life, um, started businesses, bought businesses, uh, partnered with people. I, I would say that so much of, to me, just business and the music industry to me is just another business. Um, to me, or the YouTube thing, whatever, everything comes down to inner passion and to me drive and work ethic is a byproduct of that's the result of being able to see a thermometer reading of how much inner passion is there really and so for me as a businessman i know that if my child was was showing signs of a tremendous amount of passion um, for something. And to me, passion is not tears in their eyes. Passion is not begging for something. Passion is them actually taking some steps, um, them 
looking things up on their own, them trying to learn about things, them showing some entrepreneurial seeds. Um, that That's the kind of thing that if it was my child, I would start um, putting some kingling wood around it and, yeah. and kind of support. Um, and, and, and I think, but I think it's very, it's really important that a parent or a child or somebody older, like, to be praying through all things. Um, I don't always do this perfectly. There's some days I forget. Um, there's moments I forget. But I, I generally pray before every single phone call I make in business. I generally pray before every single meeting I do with people um, where I'm literally getting down on my knees, submitting to God in my office without anybody there, begging God to show up, to be in the room, to speak through me, to protect me, you know, to uh, just give me his heart, his vision, his care for people, um, and to, to guide me and to guide them, you know, and, and uh, I found that as I've started to ask my dad in heaven um, to go before me and to um, show me the way that he's faithful to that. And um, there's been a lot less, you know, spiritual car wrecks um, that I've been in. Uh, I've met a lot less of the wrong people since I started doing that. And um, so, I mean, for me, I, I think so much of this is passion um, how do I see passion? I see passion through work ethic and drive. Um, I never view anybody in this world as negative. I, I never see anybody as lazy. I never see anybody as, you know, not working hard enough. I just view it as they're probably in the wrong position and they need to be repositioned. Like maybe they're not a first baseman, you know, maybe they're a pitcher and maybe that would excite them. Maybe they're not a bass player. Maybe they're a drummer. So whatever it is, um, uh, to me, I, I just feel like if the passion is there, you'll see those seeds of not just talking about it, but actually piecing it together or trying to piece it together on their own. Yeah. This is Stronger Together, a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Jason Davis joins me, who had a pretty uh, remarkable rocket rise in the entertainment industry, got there and then kind of looked around and said, what is the point of all this money and success? And I, I'm not happy. I don't have meaning. So at first it worked though, right? I mean, if we're going to talk about what Jesus did in your life, we're first going to say for a while it worked, right? Oh, like it, money, oh, it, famous oh, friends, high yeah. profile life. It, oh, it, 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 it worked. It, 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 it more than worked for a while. I mean, it was, I mean, and, and I still am like this. I mean, you know, God does things in my life still to this day with everything I've seen and everything I've experienced. And I mean, I've, I've experienced thanks to God alone, some pretty crazy successes and moments, definitely a lot of failure too. But, um, you know, for many years in Los Angeles, I mean, God without me knowing him was just blowing my brains and blowing my heart away. And I, I couldn't even believe like what was happening to me. Um, I, I was hanging with people I never thought was even possible. Um, I was working with like some legendary artists um, friends with them, uh, hung out with people like that regularly, um, was in mansions all the time. <laughs> um, and, uh, I mean, I had, you know, guys like Jimmy Iovine, like CEO of Interscope Records back then, like sending messengers to my house on weekends to pick up CDs of, of things and, you know, just like, just crazy stuff. And, um, for quite a while, the thing that really fulfilled it for me and kept me going was there was always something else I wanted to buy. You know, th there was always a new watch I was gunning for or a cooler new flat screen TV that, that came out or, you know, remodeling my house, like, you know, maybe getting instead of the furniture I have, maybe getting that crazy expensive handmade imported furniture from some foreign country like it, it was all like redoing the closets and making them look like a million dollar closets. Like there was always something that was distracting me. 
Okay. And that didn't work eventually, though, because you came to a point at the age of 33 where something flipped. You were ready to to end your own life, except for the fact that God put somebody there at the the exact moment, at the exact second. Right. Yeah. 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 Tell me about that. When did that stop working? When did you get depressed and realize that you needed your creator? Well, I was at the time I was married, um, and I went through. I ended up going through a divorce. I'm thanks to God remarried now, and my wife is my wife Heather is just the most amazing person I've ever met on this earth, um, and uh, loves God and loves me. Often, on most days, I feel like loves me about ten times better than I love her. Um, she's just unbelievable. But I was married at the time. And I didn't know God. She didn't know God, my, my ex-wife. And uh, about a year into the relationship, it just was obvious that we had both made a really big mistake. And um, at that same time, there was a guy that had that one of my ex-partners had brought into our into a company that we had. And this guy was basically we were finding out trying to steal from the company. So there was like chaos going on in in my business life. Um, Our company, because of that, took a little bit of a hit that year. Um, And my life was built, not really set up to take a hit financially. Um, We had a small dip in revenue. And I, I was at a place where I had to earn personally and as, as a business, um, an unbelievable amount of money a month to just Pay get out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I had to make back then what probably the average family has to make with a few kids, like a year. Like I had to make that a month, like personally, not even to pay for the company stuff. And so I had kind of built with all the money I was making, I, I kind of built this life for myself that had to be maintained and uh, I had unbelievably high mortgages and staff. And so when that hit came and everything that was going on in the marriage, like my marriage was falling apart. Uh, I was under this tremendous amount of financial pressure, tremendous. And I just kind of got to a point and there was a lot of dysfunction in my childhood that I still not dealt with. And I got to a point, I said, if this is the top of the mountain, like if this is making it, if this is like having everything on this earth, which I, thanks to God, I got to experience what that was like. Um, I don't want to be here anymore. You know, I'm under so much financial pressure. I could barely even breathe. Um, my marriage is falling apart. I can't find love. I can't maintain love. Nobody loves me. I don't even know if I know how to love. Um, and I felt so miserable and I felt like everything I had worked for was just returned void. And, uh, that, that, that's what led me to, you know, that moment. This is stronger together. It's a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationship and community. Jason Davis had a, an unbelievable career in the entertainment industry. And, uh, then <laughs> had an unbelievable kind of, downward spiral and you got to a point where you're 33 and you just said that's it yeah you go you bought three bottles of sleeping pills and you said this is my last day on this earth yep and then you got a call to do one more meet yep yeah yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I literally was in a hotel room with three bottles of sleeping pill ready to end my life and i got a call that this person um wanted to meet me the next day And that they had, um, they were about to buy a plane ticket. And I thought it was a really interesting meeting. Um, And I just instinctually said, I'll do it. (laughs) And I hung up the phone in my hotel room and I was like, okay, now what am I going to do? Like, I'm going to have somebody get on a plane and I'm not going to be there. And so so I said, you know, I, I'll check out, um, I'll do this meeting and I'm, I'll probably check back in the day after this meeting. And um, I checked out and the next day I met this guy and I was always open. I was always a seeker. 
I would, I've always listened to people. I never shut somebody down. Um, I mean, it's one of the ways I've learned in life. And this guy asked me if I knew Jesus. I was 33. I'm 44 now. That was the first time in my life anybody had ever asked me that. Uh, growing up Jewish, I didn't really hear about Jesus. So he started quoting me Bible scriptures. He had asked me if I had ever read the Bible. And I said I had not. Um, and he started quoting me Bible scriptures and the scriptures that he was telling me that were in the Bible really blew me away. Um, and I started, you know, everything he would say to me, I'd say, wow, that's in the Bible. And, uh, that night I asked him to write down those scriptures and I stared at them that night and my whole life, I felt like I was looking for truth. And that was the first time in my life at 33 years old where I actually said in my mind, I said, this is the truth. Like I finally found the truth. And um, that was the beginning of a journey that's, you know, been the most amazing. But, I mean, to me, it's like I didn't find life. I didn't find um, everything changed that day. And, uh, I went like, literally it was like from that day on, I felt like I could see colors differently. I felt like I looked at people differently. I felt like I looked at the entire world differently. Um, and God just slowly started changing my heart and my thoughts and, and, um, yeah. So I think one of the things that happens is that people who've been in church their whole lives, there's kind of this thing of like, oh, well, somebody, you know, I feel like I should be sharing Christ, but also I don't feel like anybody wants to hear it or cares. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, my experience has almost never been that, you know, my, my experience is that people are usually fairly interested. Uh, you know, if you, if you know that they, if they know you care about them, they're like, oh, okay, that's that's kind of cool. I just haven't had an experience of like anybody spitting in my face when I explain what I believed. Nope. Um, yeah. Jason Davis joins me. This is stronger together. It's a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationship and community. Uh, you know, I, I do just as we, we close out here and we're, we're going to wrap up talking about what you're doing now, kind of what God's led you into. But when you look back at that, what do you want other Christians to know other than, Hey, you should just say something. <laughs> You know, I had somebody not shared Christ with you. You would have, uh, instead of reading Bible verses in a hotel that night, you would have ended your life. Yeah. So what do you want people to know about saying something to somebody who's never, because you're like, wait a minute, you're in America. How could you not have heard of Jesus really? You're talking yeah. about it. So you're 33. Yeah. I mean, nobody had ever asked me my whole life if I knew Jesus. And I had people ask me about a whole lot of other things. I, I had people ask me, you know, about Buddhism and if I would go to, um, you know, different things with them or, you know, all kinds of different beliefs. Um, but nobody had ever really shared Jesus with me. Pe people had invited me to church before then, but you know, when you're Jewish church is like, why would I go to church? You know, like that's yeah. not my place. Um, and I, I think what opened up my heart that night was number one, I, I wasn't in a good place. And number two, um, uh, I could tell that the I could tell that the questions being asked to me were coming from a place of caring, and I, I could see caring in the person that was asking the questions. There was no judgment, uh, like somebody wasn't you know ridiculing me about my life or saying hey nobody was trying to debate me. I could just see in the person's eyes like that there was a care, and it was seeing that care that made my heart open and my ears open and I said, okay, like, what, what, what do you want to share with me? And, um, it was literally a simple question of, you know, do you know Jesus? And that started a dialogue that forever changed my life. Yeah. And I get, I think we landed on something really important there. You would not go to church. That was not going to be your thing. But when somebody just shared the gospel with you. Yes. Oh, huh. This yeah. is different. Well, well, you know what's cool about that moment was, you know, he started telling me these Bible scriptures, and I felt, I wasn't sure, but I felt like the sum total of the, what the Bible scriptures were saying, what he was saying to me, I felt like what he was saying, and I asked him, I said, so are these things in the Bible that you're telling me, is it basically telling me that? If I follow God, 
my life will work out okay. Is that kind of what it's saying? And he's like, yeah, it's really that simple if you follow God. And I said, you know, that's so interesting because the only thing I've ever had to follow was man. And I said to him that night, I said, you know, I've learned some amazing things from man. And I've learned also some not very good behavior from man. And so I've, I've learned great things, but I've also learned some really not great things. And so what you're saying is if I follow God, I'm following a perfect example. You know, uh, there is no bad side. Like there's no, oh, I'm going to learn some bad habits. Like, and he's like, exactly. And, and I was like, it just, I was like, that makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah. So, Yeah. Let, let's land the plane here by talking about what God has led you into and, you know, how you've been able to, to use your gifts, you know, in music right now. You've talked about how much Christian music means to you and how you've been able to be a part of it. So let's just land right there. By the way, if you missed any part of this conversation on the radio, you can always go back and search Shine.fm on Facebook or YouTube to see the video in its entirety. Or you can search Shine.fm podcast to grab the entire conversation there and subscribe to other um, to other. Uh, shows about faith, music, and family. So, yeah, just Jason Davis says we land a plane here. What are you doing now, man? Well, it's all it's all the same stuff I've always done. You know, I, I'm still working in secular music. Um, I have partnerships in Los Angeles and partnerships in Nashville where we develop singer-songwriters or alternative artists or TV and film-type artists. Um, I am, you know, back in Christian music as well. Um, so I'm a part of uh, – I'm a manager – uh, of first company management. You know, we manage the Newsboys as a company and Ryan Stevenson. And um, I personally manage Austin French. And um, I'm talking to one of the managers there about us doing, we have an idea of something that we're probably going to do together as well. And um, I think the biggest change, the biggest change that I often say, and I feel like what God showed me is that before I found God, the love of God. Before I found the love of God, I would meet people in business, in the music industry, and to me, the deal always came before people. I always cared about the deal, and the person, not so much. And God, one of the most beautiful things that God has done for me is that he's totally reversed that and made me care solely about the person and the deal very secondary. And so now I'm freed up to meet with people. I don't care if I get anything from them. I don't need anything from them. I don't want anything from them. I actually just want to serve people or love people in whatever moment he's put me in. And if that leads to me working with somebody, then man, like that's beautiful and I'm going to love them well and do serve them well. And, but it just, he's really changed my heart and my mind into being, into desiring to be more of just, you know what, my job on this earth is to be a servant and to love my neighbor well and to my neighbors, anybody that's in front of me, I care about them first and it's God who takes care of me, not people. If I, yeah, and if I can just put a bow on this whole thing, it, it sounds like I hear you saying what, uh, what you kind of found was that like the stuff that you were trying to get out of the sports cars and the fancy lifestyle and the yes. friends you found by serving people that maybe nobody else cares about. Is that the way to say it? Yes. Yes. Amen. Jason Davis, seriously, if you missed any part of this conversation on the radio, I'm telling you, you, you got to hear this whole thing uh, to get filled in because this is a fantastic one where we just touched on everything from parenting to uh, sharing your faith in Christ with others. Uh, you can search once again, shine.fm on Facebook, YouTube, or wherever you download podcasts to grab the rest of this. This is shine.fm. That was Stronger Together, a show about growing in marriage, parenting, relationships, and community. Subscribe to the shine.fm podcast to catch every episode of Stronger Together, available on the iTunes podcast app and wherever podcasts are available.